Hello everyone. In this recording, we're going to set up a Dask distributed network and then use that network from a client. So these three terminals here will, uh, will comprise our Dask distributed network and this one here will be our client. Uh, normally, these three would live on some remote cluster, maybe you know, in the cloud on Amazon EC2 or OpenStack or inside your own company's network. Uh, but for this demo, we're just going to be on my own laptop here. So we're going to set up a scheduler. There we go. So the scheduler is the central point of control for all of the workers. Uh, and it also serves as sort of a gateway for the clients to talk to. So the scheduler has a couple of addresses that are notable. There's an address uh, to which clients will, will connect and an address to which workers will connect. Uh, so now we're gonna make a couple of workers in these two terminals here. These might be different machines in, print, in principle. Um, and when we make a worker, we'll need to provide this same address so the worker knows where to connect to find its scheduler. And as it does so, uh, they do a little handshake, and the, the scheduler now knows uh, that it has one worker attached to it. So over here, make another one. And just for fun, let's, let's make two in this process. And so now we see that there's, there are three different workers. Uh, so the workers can talk to each other and they'll hold onto their own data and communicate to each other as, as necessary. But the scheduler will sort of keep track of who has what and it will execute Dask graphs on these two nodes. So now that we have our system set up, let's go to our client. This is sort of how, user, this is how users would normally interact with the scheduler and we'll see how that, how that works. So I'm going to give first the sort of low level introduction on to how to make a Dask graph and then execute it on this distributed system. Uh, and then we'll show using Dask array and sort of the normal high, high, higher level collections. So first I'll make a graph, I'll make a couple of functions, increment and add. So increment adds one to the input and add adds the two inputs together. Uh, we'll then make a Dask graph. A Dask graph is actually just a dictionary. We'll set A to be one. We'll set B to be the result of calling inc on A. And then we'll set C to be the result of calling add on both A and B. So B will be two, calling inc on one. And then C will be the result of calling add on one and then two. So C will be one plus two, three. Uh, now, before we use the distributed scheduler, we'll use just a simple multi-threaded scheduler just to show how this works. All of the schedulers have this get method. And get takes a Dask graph and the key or keys that you for, for which you want the results. And so we see that this indeed it returns to us the value three. Remember that C was also calling add on A and B, so one plus two. Uh, but we can do this also with processes rather than, rather than threads. And we get back the same result. So the schedulers should all give the same result, but might have different performance guarantees, might have different performance properties. <coughs> so now let's build a client and connect up to our scheduler. Uh, the client is much like a worker, except it needs a different address. So we'll take off this, uh, this address to clients here from the scheduler. Uh, so in, in common use, you can specify these ports ahead of time. The scheduler accepts keyword arguments. Uh, we've just let 0MQ provide us with some unused ports. But if you want some well-known ports that you know are good, you can select those two. Uh, so we now we have a client, and that client is an object that has a get method. And it works exactly like the other get functions. Uh, except in this case, it took our Dask graph and it sent that to the scheduler. The scheduler then looked at that graph, pulled off little, little tasks, and sent them to its various workers. Those workers communicated to each other in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, finished the work, and then sent the result back to the scheduler, which sent the result back to the client, which then gave us our nice answer of three. 
Uh, this example is fairly small. You'd probably want to use a single thread for this, not a distributed network. Uh, it's also using these, these DAS graphs, which are sort of more of an expert technique. Uh, most users don't interact with DAS in this way. Most users use the, the higher level collections, like Dask Array. Uh, and so in the next example, we'll show how to use Dask Array with a Dask distributed scheduler. Uh, we'll, make a, we'll make a large normal random array with mean 10 and standard deviation 0.1. And let's do, say, 100 million elements. Uh, cut up into blocks of size 1 million. So we'll have uh, one large array comprised of 100 blocks of size 1 million each. Uh, we would compute something like the mean. Uh, and if we actually want to compute the result, we add on the so compute method. By default, this will use the Dask threaded scheduler. Threads are usually a good approach for, for NumPy computations, for Dask array computations. Uh, but, just so we can use our, our distributed scheduler, we can provide a get keyword argument, and we can provide it with any of the scheduling functions. Uh, so we can use, say, the get method coming off of the client. So that sent the graph over to the scheduler. That scheduler took all of those 100 tasks for all the different bits, sent them to the different workers, they computed their results, uh, they you know, finished up the result, and then sent it back to the scheduler and back to the client. Okay, that's it. If you'd like to learn more about Dask, you can go to dask.pydata.org. And there's docs there both on Dask in general and on, on the distributed scheduler. Thank you for your time.